YouTube, welcome back to another reaction video. Why well, I came in so hard? Last reaction, y'all slept. Like, I kept it on for four days, and y'all did not watch that video. So, I, I feel like y'all just like the crime videos, so that's what we gonna do. We gonna, we gonna watch, we gonna react to those type of videos, since that's what y'all wanna see. Um, If all the old subscribers coming back, I'm not doing WeTube no more, because my channel on the verge of getting deleted, and I'm not gonna lose my channel so i'm not gonna say i'm never gonna do it again but right now we're straight reaction straight vlogs just talking to the camera i'm not doing youtube right now so i know that's what y'all want to see i want to see me get fried y'all want to see me all but i can't do it like i have two strikes on my channel one more and y'all will see no more cloud kj unless i make a new channel and start from zero subscribers I can't do it anymore, but today's video, we got, uh, when y'all said this in, it says, cop is fired and arrested after this lawsuit. Now, listen, I just got into it with the cops a few days ago. I got pulled over twice in, like, five minutes because they was following me. I'm, I'm going to give y'all the story time after, but just know these, 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 these pigs, these cops, they be making up shit. Oh, my, and I know this, they be making up shit. When I, when I tell the story time at the end, Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it in the comments. Y'all let me know y'all experiences with these cops. Because I live in Florida, so it's kind of different. Some of y'all might live in, like, New York, where it's really bad. And some of y'all might live in, like, L.A., where shit, people cars getting broken into, no police in sight. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, Yeah, let's get into the video. Hold on. We got to add... But we're going to start the screen record. I hope all y'all enjoy this video. Because some one of y'all sent this in. So I hope y'all really watch it. Three, two, one. Starting the video now. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers domestic violence, warrantless entries, and excessive force, and is brought to us by the K-Views channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On the evening of September 21st, 2019, officers responded to a domestic violence call in Austin, Texas. Deputy Pereira with the Williamson County Sheriff's Office arrived on the scene and knocked on the door of an apartment where 20-year-old Skylar Leal lived with her boyfriend Eric Ramirez to investigate the call, which was made by one of their neighbors. Hey, let me talk to you real quick. Yeah. Do you need EMS? No, I'm fine. Come out here. Come out here. I really don't want to deal with y'all people. All right, well, we'll make sure you're okay. I'm fine. She's just like me for real. 16 through 6 county, we're code, code 4. Don't want to deal with y'all uh, people. She's not eating. So, what happened? Nothing. Look up for me. What's on your neck? What happened? Nothing happened. So, I have witnesses saying something happened. Nothing. So, you're trying to protect him? No, I just really don't like dealing with y'all. I really don't want to deal with y'all. I really don't. Okay. So... I don't need to talk to y'all. I really don't. Do you have your ID on you or anything? No, I don't. So, what's your last name? Okay. I mean, where is the guy that allegedly? I mean, we I, don't. We don't. I don't know where he's at. I don't. So he left. He left. Does he yeah. live in this apartment complex? No, he does not. You don't know which way he went. I don't know, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Damn. Six, she three, like me for real. Or victims advising, she does not know which way he went. So were y'all? I'm trying to figure out why your friends called the cops. What friend? or your witnesses, whoever was over here that called us. Okay. So we what? Got, we got into an argument, okay. that's it, that's it. Literally. Okay, it was nothing physical? Nothing physical. Where are the marks on your neck from? We got into my necklace right here. No, this right here. What is that from? Mm, does it really matter? Yes, does it make sure you're okay. I'm fine, ma'am. So? I'm fine, like literally I'm fine. Okay. I get, I'm gonna be honest with you, I get a rash talking to y'all. I do not want to talk okay. to you. And especially Williamson County, y'all have a really bad reputation. I have okay. bad encounters with y'all. I do not want I'm to not gonna with you. hurt you. I know you aren't mad. Okay, really so we're just we need talk your talk cooperation. You. I know, and I'm Do you wanna to press to charges? I do not. Okay. Me. I do not. Is there anyone else in the My apartment with you? Is here. Okay, can I talk to her? Yes. Okay. Wait, you wanna no. go get 
listen, I'm all for not talking to the police. I'm I'm big on it. But if he is beating your ass though, like if he did strangle you, like you should probably like tell. But if she, if she's saying he didn't do nothing, then they should leave. But she said I don't see none of her neck because her face is blurred. But like, if he really did strangle you, like it's you need to fucking tell the police. No, I really don't want you to talk. Okay, well, it's none of if she wants to talk to me, then I can talk to her. She does not want to talk to How me. How do I know that? Because I told her that she had nothing to do with this. Okay, well, let me try to make contact with her. Do you want to go back inside for the time no, being? I don't. I really don't. Okay, it's well, then step over here no. for me. So what? what's the deal? What is your problem? First I'm trying thing. to figure out what's going I'm on I'm trying here. to tell you, ma'am. She had nothing to do with this. I called her after because called I called the my... cops. I didn't call the cops. I'm asking who called the cops, guys. Those people, I don't know. You don't know them? I don't know them. I never met those people in my life. Okay. Ms. Leal informs Deputy Pereira that Mr. Ramirez has left the apartment, that she does not know where he is, and that she does not wish to press charges for domestic assault. Domestic violence laws vary widely among states, with state laws differing on issues such as how domestic abuse is defined, the types of crimes domestic abusers can be charged with, but they mandatory much, reporting like, requirements, talk, and whether police officers are obligated to make an arrest. While some house. states have adopted policies that require police to make an arrest when responding to domestic violence calls or file a report explaining why an arrest is not made, in Texas, it is left to a police officer's discretion whether to make Texas an arrest. Article 14.03 oh, sure. of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure states that officers may arrest without a warrant, quote, persons who the peace officer has probable cause to believe have committed an offense involving family violence. Although Ms. Leal stated that she did not want to press charges against Mr. Ramirez, contrary to popular belief, it is not up to a victim to decide whether to pursue criminal charges. When officers investigate the scene of a possible crime, they are authorized to arrest a suspect if they conclude there is probable cause to do so. Likewise, prosecutors can file criminal charges against a victim's wishes if they have sufficient evidence to prove that the offense occurred without the victim's cooperation. Article 5.01 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure notes that, quote, Family violence is a serious danger and threat to society and its members. Victims of family violence are entitled to the maximum protection from harm or abuse, or the threat of harm or abuse as is permitted by law. In any law enforcement response to allegations of family violence, the responding law enforcement shall protect the time, victim. This reminds me of summer one time when I was a kid. You know, as kids, we used to get beat, like we used to get beat with the belt. I swear to God, I used to want to call trolls so bad. I used to want to call the police so bad and be like, these people abuse me, like, take me away from these people. Like, I just remember, every time I think about, like, I just think about that, like, how, how I used to be when I was a kid. I know everybody go through that, too, when your parents do something, and they just be like, man, I hate you, man. I'm going I'm to call the police. I'm never coming back. Like, when I get older, I'm going I'm to, I'm I'm mm. I know, I know we all been there with our people. Without regard to the relationship between the alleged <laughs> offender and victim. Similarly, Article 5.04 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure states that, quote, Damn. the primary active order from another video, through Texas though. law to protect her. So, I got her name and date of birth. She doesn't want to be cooperative. I see some marks on her neck that might be fresh. She's saying she's denying medical attention. She said she didn't want to talk to us. Sister doesn't want to talk. They live in here. So, so she's like, I don't even want y'all in my house. So I'm like, well, we gotta find the guy that allegedly did this. So she didn't give direction, travel, description, anything. She's like, he left. I don't know where he went. Third level, Dickerson. So we need to see if this guy's inside your apartment. Who else is in here? My sister, um, no, I really don't. Deputy Lorenzo Hernandez, who was once featured on the reality show Live PD, arrives on the scene and tries to force his way into the apartment. Ms. Leal protests saying, his attempt to much. enter while standing in front of the door, and Deputy Hernandez grabs her by the throat and throws her to the ground. We will discuss what? the legality of Deputy Hernandez's what? use of force in a moment, but it should first be noted that a court would likely conclude that the officers did have the authority to enter Ms. Leal's apartment. The Fourth Amendment generally requires officers to have a warrant to enter a citizen's home without their permission. However, there are some exceptions to the warrant requirement, See, which include was, authorization to enter you, to protect- police now, bro. Y'all just get the badge and it goes straight to y'all head, bro. It goes to the, I never met a police officer with a badge, do not get to their head. They just think, they just got, they think they just, 
Like, when you go home and take that badge off, you know you're not shit, right? You know when you go home, you're not shit. You're just a regular person. Even with that badge on, you're still a regular person. But for some reason, these cops, when they get this badge and they, and, and they just feel like, yeah, they just feel like they got all the power. Like, they could do whatever. They can punch people, uh, sling people across the floor. I seen a video the other day. It was a lady recording. And that cop literally manhandled her and threw her ass on the floor for recording. Recording her husband getting arrested. He flunked her. So, bro, you cops, I swear, y'all let the badge and the gun get to y'all head. Y'all just feel like, y'all just feel like, I don't even know. Y'all just feel like, like, we, everybody got to bow down to y'all feet. And a person like me, it'll never happen. You're going to have to arrest me. Individuals, you such as domestic me. violence victims, from immediate what the hell? harm. That's In the 2006 case of me. Georgia versus Randolph, the Supreme Court explained that, quote, no question has been raised, oh, or reasonably could be, about the authority of the police to, Are we about to go back enter to the video over object talking? officer's entry. Courts all of danger if no was just theirs, the court a warrant or given this precedent it is probable that a court would conclude that deputy hernandez had the authority she got the court found that the officers reasonably believed she was lying and at risk of continued violence given this precedent it is probable that a court would conclude that deputy hernandez had the authority to enter ms leo's apartment without a warrant or oh, her consent to ensure her safety y'all y'all weren't even supposed to go into my apartment y'all you with with what i'm literally gonna press charges on y'all we have a possible felony possible felony Yes. For what? For who? He's not here. I'm telling you. But who, you don't know where he went? I don't know where he went. Lady. Okay. Like what? You can understand why you're in handcuffs right now? So what happened? We were trying to talk, right? That's all we were trying to do? Hey, so I'm gonna take these handcuffs off you. I wouldn't have said shit. shit. I, I would have said another word. You take these handcuffs yeah, off. The, the light's not on. It's not on. It's a okay. All right, ma'am. So I wasn't here with information to relate to you. When we come to stuff like this, we're going to check for safety reasons. Okay, we're gonna make sure he's not here and you're not hiding him. We understand you don't want to cooperate. We can't force you to do that. We get that. We understand that. But you don't do what you just did. Not when we show up for something like this. We don't get your cooperation. That is what happens. Yeah. Okay? She just Deputy her. Hernandez tells Ms. Leal that the altercation was a result of her non-compliance and implies that the deputies were within their authority to use force against her. However, a court would almost certainly disagree with Deputy Hernandez's interpretation of the situation. When determining whether the officer's use of force is constitutional, so courts like, must so decide mad. whether the level oh of force God. employed was reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. To reach this conclusion, courts consider the three factors outlined in the 1989 Supreme Court case of Graham v. Connor, which are, now quoting, the severity of the crime resisting arrest, and she was not posing any sort of physical to gain entry. Under these circumstances, it is clear that a court would find the force used by Deputy Hernandez to be excessive. All this screaming all this make it, make, does not make us stop, okay? It only makes us get you secure faster, okay? It's my what? understanding you do not want to cooperate, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, we know who he is. We're going to find him eventually. Yes, sir. He comes back over here for whatever reason. You're having a call because he's continuing to do what he's going to do. We're going to take him to jail. Understand those circumstances that you y'all put yourselves in and y'all make us have to deal with those issues. Okay? Yes, sir. Then Sheriff Robert Schody ordered an internal investigation into the altercation, and Deputy Hernandez was suspended for one day as a result. He was promoted to detective two months later, but in January 2021, Deputy Hernandez resigned when former Sheriff Schody left office after being defeated by current Sheriff Mike Gleason. On May 17, 2021, former Deputy Hernandez was charged with official oppression and assault for the force he used against Ms. Leal. And on September 20, 2021, Ms. Leal filed a federal lawsuit against Mr. Hernandez and the Williamson County Sheriff's Office. As of the date of this episode, both the criminal charges against Mr. Hernandez and Ms. Leal's civil suit are still pending. Overall, former Deputy Hernandez gets an F for escalating a relatively so peaceful encounter into a later. physical altercation, maintaining an unprofessional and dispassionate attitude, and for needlessly using an unnecessarily high degree of force against Ms. Leal. It was less than 10 seconds between the time that Mr. Hernandez first made contact with Ms. Leal and when he forced her to the ground with a choke.
As mentioned earlier, the Williamson County deputies were likely within their authority to enter Ms. Leal's apartment to investigate the domestic disturbance. However, it's difficult to rationalize their method of doing so if they truly suspected that Ms. Leal was a victim of abuse. In October of 2019, the International Association of Chiefs of Police developed a model policy for domestic violence calls. This policy states that officers should take photographs of all injuries of all parties involved in the call. However, none of the deputies did this, despite Deputy Pereira's claim that Ms. Leal had sustained an injury on her neck. This is an important discrepancy in the way that the deputies handled this investigation, because unless the uncensored body camera footage clearly showed Ms. Leal's alleged injury, there is no way to distinguish the injuries that she sustained from abuse and exactly. those sustained from being choked and physically subdued by the officers. This may offer the suspect a legitimate defense if he's ever charged with domestic violence as a result of this interaction. As the deputies were releasing Ms. Leal, Mr. Hernandez made several inflammatory statements that undermined her victim status and essentially blamed blamed Ms. Leal for continuing a pattern of abuse. Mr. Hernandez told Ms. Leal, quote, Understand that these circumstances y'all put yourselves in, and y'all make us have to deal with these issues. And, quote, We have a job to do. Whether you understand that in the moment, I don't care. Nothing that Mr. Hernandez did was conducive to establishing an environment of trust with Ms. Leal, and it is clear that Mr. Hernandez failed to consider the psychological implications of being a victim of long-term abuse. This interaction highlights the importance of thorough domestic violence training and well-established domestic so violence cool. policy within police departments nationwide. As for Ms. Leal, it's difficult to assign a grade to an individual who is clearly suffering from emotional trauma outside the context of this interaction. Considering the information provided to the officers by the 911 caller, it's safe to assume that Ms. Leal had been dealing with a mentally and likely physically taxing situation, and she was under a lot of emotional stress when she initially made contact with Deputy Pereira. The IACP specifically mentions that victims of abuse may respond to officers with denial and anger for a litany of reasons, and acknowledges that, quote, Officers need to understand that victims of domestic violence can display a wide variety of reactions to the violence. No two victims may express themselves in the same way. There is no denying that domestic violence calls are often extremely complex and difficult to resolve peacefully. However, the difficulty of a lawful duty should never be a deterrent for carrying out that duty with professionalism, understanding, and diligence. I commend Ms. Leal for having the courage to follow up this encounter with the proper legal action. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss right, in the comments. That was the end of the video. I'm not gonna lie. Like videos like this make me mad because it's like it's like I never I never got like like a police never did something like that to me but I don't got followed before. Like I had a police like I was all the way in the left lane. I had a police come from the right lane all the way over to come right behind me and then pull me over and say uh I didn't I didn't treat the the stop sign. I didn't stop all the way at the stop sign. Like if it's oncoming traffic, how was I not supposed to how was how did I not stop? If I had to stop, if his car's coming down. So they'd be making up stuff to try to pull people over, try to see what they can find, what they can get. And it don't work because you have to be dumb to ride around with shit in your car. Unless you like a drug dealer. Because the way they the way they be just out here just trying to scope people out. You gotta be stupid and really be riding around with shit in your car, knowing uh, you have a chance of getting uh, pulled over, especially if you have tents. Yeah, that's what they hate. All the police officers have dark tents, but when they see other people with dark tents, it just do something to them. They 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 think oh, it gotta be a drug dealer in there. It gotta be a, uh, some type of I don't even know. And a regular person just driving the car, they think oh dark tents, red flag, gotta pull it over. That's what they do. Literally, I got pulled over for stuff that don't even make sense. I had one officer tell me I ran a red light. Don't you think I would have known if I ran a red light? Yeah, okay. And then they say, oh, you were uh, moving in and out the out the lane. Like, how? But I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what other videos y'all want. Uh, It's kind of cold in here. Let me know what other videos y'all want. I'm going to see y'all in the next video. We out. God took me right up out my sins, I can't go back no. Holy step and gaining real knowledge, you can soak that yeah. Thank God he gave me good light and brought hope back yes. Big stepping on the devil's head, got my toe fat They said I